Morgan Ortega is kind enough to join us this morning, former spokesperson for the U.S. State Department, currently running for Tennessee's 5th Congressional District. Uh, Morgan, welcome back to the show. Great to have you with us always. Thank you so much. Good morning. Happy Monday. It is Monday, and off we go. Uh, you know, the searing images of uh, Boris Johnson of Britain uh, walking with Zelensky in Ukraine, uh, did it feel uh, to you, Morgan Ortega, like it felt to many of us that, well, looks like America's on the back burner, no world leader here, and uh, and here Britain, and I don't always agree with Boris Johnson these days, but I thought that was just a wonderful, courageous thing to do, to walk with Zelensky. And we could only hope that President Biden would have done the same, but I guess apparently not, huh? No, I, I agree with you. Whenever I saw those images over over the weekend, I think that we were all inspired. Um, and, and by the way, listen, I think this is how it, it should be in, in many ways. Uh, we need Europe. This, this is the whole point of NATO, and you and I have talked about this quite a bit. But we need Europe to be able to to lead the fight uh, towards the Russians because, you know, listen, I, I am a I am a firm believer that we have to do everything that we can from a defense and intel and foreign policy perspective to counter the Chinese Communist Party. And, and listen, we had to drag the Russians, kick, uh, excuse me, the Germans uh, and even the French kicking and screaming, you know, into yeah. finally yeah. Taking actions to deter Russia. And by the way, it's a day late and a dollar short, and nor am I convinced that the Germans are actually going to stick with it for the long term. But listen, we saw some really disastrous policies under the former German Chancellor Angela Merkel uh, that were just uh, so acquiescent to uh, to Russia. And, and so if there is any lesson to be learned, it's that it is us, we, the United States, uh, with our allies uh, in the Indo-Pacific that are going to have to lead the fight against the Chinese Communist Party. So um, do I wish that Biden uh, had the fortitude that Boris Johnson has to go to Kiev and to walk with Zelensky? Absolutely. Um, what I had really wished is that Biden and his team had the fortitude to do the proper deterrence to make sure Russia never evaded in the first place. Thank you. Oh, it's so frustrating. It's so, it was so preventable. And people, uh, thank you for addressing that, because people forget about that, the, how they, we allow Putin to go in. And this, to me, is a self-inflicted wound, and we could have led the way, and we did not. And now, now when, right. we're watching, when we're watching this unfold, I mean, and, and you know what also, to your point, that's a great point you make, Morgan, about Germany, and now Germany's helping out Ukraine. But where were they? They, along with uh, France, did not want Ukraine into NATO. And, and Zelensky has said that. It was Germany and France that, that kept them from coming into NATO. If they were in NATO, Putin never would have attacked them. How ironic uh, this has become, yes? No, I listen, I totally agree with you. Uh, you know, I am... I, I'm, I'll, I'll tell you where I am encouraged and where I'm discouraged. Um, I'm encouraged in that I feel like the like NATO um, is finally getting their act together. They're more unified than ever um, because God forbid if we enter you know some sort of geopolitical scenario where we are at conflict with both Russia and China. As I said, we are going to have to be able to focus on China. So we need NATO. Uh, we need the Europeans. Um, and so I know that there's a lot of, uh, uh, of intel sharing and cooperation and pledges for defense spending. Let's hold their feet to the fire, right, every country, and make sure that whenever this uh, situation finally ends in Ukraine, that everybody doesn't revert back to business as usual. That That's yep. where I'm concerned. I also think, you know, as much as we talk about sanctions, um, we keep giving the Russians a lifeline, right? We, and you and I have talked about this before. We are not delivering the knockout punch that that we were that we are able to. And so, what I think you're seeing, what, what we're what we're entering in my mind is is sort of more of a protracted siege uh, kind mm -hmm. of kind of phase. I still think we're we're pretty far away from a finalized negotiation between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, Zelensky was saying to the South Koreans um, yesterday that, that he thinks that the Russians are preparing for a new offensive. Um, certainly, I think they're going to focus on the Donbass. So what that means for your, view, uh, for your listeners and, and for everybody who's following this is you can sort of see this enter a stage where you continue to see horrific images coming out of certain parts of Ukraine. They don't really make progress in, in negotiations. It's still kind of protracted. Now, why do we have that, Joe? We have that because there is a failure uh, on our part, on the part of the West writ large, uh, to really uh, deliver the sanctions um, that, like I said, that would be a knockout mm -hmm. punch that would mm -hmm. that would compel a fundamental shift in Russia. 
second thing that not, I think is not being talked about uh, most effectively um, is that we have also failed, from, from what I can tell, um, to conduct information warfare inside of Russia. So what I mean by that is if you if you look at Russian sentiment, if you look at all the polls um, for you know people in their country inside Russia, it is still very pro Putin, right? It, they are very supportive of the war against Amazing. the Ukrainians. Amazing. And yeah. I've seen some uh, you know some political scientists sort of arguing, saying, well, maybe the polls are, are wrong. Uh, you know, listen, I, I think they, I, I think this is where we have lost to the Russians in the sense that they have been brilliant about getting their people to uh, rally around the flag. And, and we have failed to deliver the costly sanctions that make the Russians go, well, wait a minute, what's, what's our leader doing? What's Putin doing? They're firmly behind them, and we should, be, we should have eyes wide open. And the third thing I would say, Joe, and you know I talk about this forever, but I'll make this the, the last thing, and then you can ask more questions if you want. But <laughs> it's important to remember we keep hearing this naivete coming out of the Democrats. And, and President Obama, former President Obama, said it last week. When he said, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, in an interview, he said, well, this isn't, this basically isn't the Putin that I knew. And I'm going, come on, guys. Yeah. He's the same Putin. Now, listen, yeah. there's all this speculation that he was isolated during COVID and he sort of lost his mind. I'm like, well, th- does anybody remember Chechnya? Does anybody, did anybody watch Syria for the past eight years and what the Russians did there? The yeah. guy has been nasty and brutal for 23 years, and it's the naivete of Democrat leaders. Uh, when they think that, you know, maybe, maybe, just maybe they'll get them to, they'll get, uh, you know, Putin to care about what the rest of us think about him at cocktail parties in Paris and D.C. Uh, uh, spoiler alert, Joe, he doesn't care. <laughs> what a great overview. Thank you, Morgan Ortegas. Uh, Morgan, I appreciate that so much because and because I'm afraid that they'll settle and, oh, we're going to have uh, peace talks, peace talks. And then how do you deal with Putin? I've been asking this question. I've not got an answer for it. How do you deal with him? You leave this, 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 this Hitler-esque creature, what Putin has done to the Ukrainian people in power? Is mm-hmm. that what's going to happen if they have a settlement? I mean, I, I don't know what the end game is. I don't know that there's a proper, on a humanitarian crisis that Ukraine has become. I don't know how you settle this whole thing by leaving Putin in power. Your point is so well taken in that regard, Morgan. Well, thank you. I, You know, I appreciate it. Uh, uh, saying that, I, these are the kind of things, Joe, that I don't like being wrong on, but I, excuse me, yes. that I don't like being right on, right? Yeah, no, I, I, I don't want to be right on this. I got but you. I can say, you know, I can tell you what our leaders have to do is exactly what Mike Pompeo, former Secretary of State, my former boss, did with the Russians. You know, I, I was with him in the room for more meetings than I can remember with the Russians. Uh, we went to Sochi, we met with Putin, and uh, listen, Mike Pompeo was as tough as nails, right? There's, there's some more colorful words that I would describe to you if we weren't on your radio show um, <laughs> of, how he, of how he acted. But that, when, you, when you ask me that question, how do we deal with Putin? Uh, we deal with him like the thug that he is, and we speak his language. It's so true. You know what? And by the way, before we let you go, so you are you were in the meetings because I look at uh, I look at Anthony Blinken and I see the weakness of Jake. So this is me talking Jake Sullivan and Blink. It's there's no diplomacy there. Mike Pompeo, you just plain didn't mess with. So before you went out and you did uh, a spokesperson for the State Department, you were in a lot mm-hmm. of those meetings. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you were yeah. you ought to be a vital part yeah. of it. So you knew you were talking about to the press. Uh, I, I was in. I was very lucky to be in those meetings with Pompeo because I watched him stand strong, stand yes. firm, stand tough yeah. for America, um, yep. and he always yep. supported President Trump. You know, there was there were some uncomfortable meetings with the Russians. You know, I, I will say that uh, some meetings. You know, where he uh, he he was the kind of diplomat we needed, which was you know a, a tough one, not someone that was willing to to you know give away the farm or to give yep. you know Russians ten billion dollars in sanctions immunity for nuclear deals with Iran. You know, you went and we love him. Great guy, great man. I respect him immensely, as we do you, Morgan Ortegas. Hey, where can we? So you're 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 running for the fifth congressional district. Where can we find you online uh, to find out all the great work you're you're doing down in the great state of Tennessee, Morgan? Well, thank you so much for asking. You can go to morganortegas.com, and all my social media handles are at Morgan Ortegas, and so that's Morgan Ortegas O R T A G U S dot com. Sounds good, Morgan. Thanks for taking the time with us. Always great chat this morning. Thank you. Have a great week and happy Easter. Thanks, Joe. Passover for me, but happy Easter. I know. I meant to say that too. Thank you. Passover as well. (laughs) Thank you, Morgan. Go get them. Thanks so much. Take care. Thank you. (laughs) It's so funny.